Let's meet the Jacobson family. Tim, Mary, Tom, Tara, and Pat. Ready for action. Playing again. Mackenzie family. Ken, Carolyn, Colin, Karen, and Mona. On your mark. Let's start the family feud. With the star of family feud, Ray Cohen. Thank you. Welcome to all the folks who tuned in to watch two great families battle it out for the chance at $10,000. For the second time on our show, they are the champions. Welcome the Jacobson family. Mary, you fell short of that money last time. Uh, not this time. Tell everybody who you brought with you to help you get it this time. Okay, I got Brother Tim. Brother Tim? And his twin brother, Tom. Tim, brother Tom. And his wife, Kara. Yes. Newlywed. And... Her brother, Thad. Thad, welcome back. <laughs> Champions currently in a fine family. How will you do when you face the Mackenzie family? Yeah. 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 Where is the Mackenzie family from? Camarillo, California. Welcome, and who did you bring with you? My sister-in-law, Carolyn. Hi. My brother, Colin. Hi. My sister, Karen. Hi. Hi. And my sister, Mona. Yeah. You ready to win? Yeah. Oh, you betcha. I say then, let's play the feud. Oh, oh. Mary against Ken. First family to 300 will play for $10,000. The top six answers are on that board to a question that was asked of 100 people across this great land. But it was 100 women. 100 women. Try to find the most popular answer, remembering women. Tell me something that you might want to know about a man's past. Mary? His sexual history. His sexual history. Did that make our survey? <laughs> sexual activity. Stay here. Two answers could be more popular of our hundred women surveyed that, that they might want to know about a man's past. How much money he made? All right. Maybe it's more popular to know how much money he made. <laughs> On this survey, of a Tia. All right. This is a very thought-provoking question, and it's a very good question. We ask a hundred women, so keep that in mind. Something that you might want to know about a man's past, whether they've been married or not. Yeah. 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 Have you been married? Yeah. Thirty-eight people Come on, said, "Have you been married?" Come on, Tom. I got it. Tom, I just want to point out that every time I've stood here, I have handed you one of these. I know, and I don't uh, like I, them anymore. I'm an optimist, no, 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 and I believe no. that you can do this. Yeah. You might want to know about a man's past what? Where he grew up. How about that? Yeah. Where he grew up. What's up, there? Uh, oh. Tim, Tim, allow me. Tom, keeping with tradition. Yes. Cairo. The question of a hundred women. Tell me something that you might want to know about a man's past. Does he have any children? Yes. Four answers are on that board is one of them. Do you have any children? All right, Thad. Thad, I want you to listen to me. There's forty-nine dollars that could go to the McKenzies if you don't. Know. It's not. Sorry. I love the spirit. I love the spirit. What's the answer? Uh, they want to know about his family, like his family history. Good they, genes. Like, they want good genes. They'd like to know about his family's history. history. No! Oh, my God. Right. Sorry about that. Now, three strikes. Listen carefully. Give one answer to help the head of your family. Here's what we can learn about what women think. Hundred women, something you might want to know about a man's past. Where he's lived. Where he's lived. His occupation. Occupation. Can you trust him? Can you trust him? What he does, what he does, where he, does, where he, he lives. lives. Can you trust him where he's from? You tell Ken. You've got four shots. Let me call for calm. You may go on your own, Ken, or with your family. What are you going to do? What he does for a living. Career. Did our hundred women want to know what 
he did for a living. The champions keep their bank. We'll see if any of the remaining answers were given by your teammates. But this is interesting. Hundred women, pay attention. These are the things, men, that they want to know about our past. They want to know, number two, past None of your business. Number four, they want to know. <laughs> and number five, they want to know. <laughs> Sounds like you're going into the military. And number six, they want to know. Are you married now? Come on back. The view's just begun. Great questions with surprising answers from real people. See you in a moment. To relieve the congestion and sneezing of a full-grown cold. Maximum strength Dimatap Extend Tabs. Relief for the full-grown cold. And for colds and flu with fever, now there's Dimatap. We are back. Right now the Jacobsons, $49. The McKenzie, zero. Let's go. Here they never face off. Before we do this, how can your family stand right here and make lots of cash? Tell them, Gene. Okay, Ray, if your family would like to try out for Family Feud and you live in the Los Angeles area, call area code 213-965-9999. If you live in the San Diego area, call area code 619-223-2101. Back to Ray. Thanks you so much, Mr. Gene. Yeah, please call today. Carol and Tim, good luck. The top five answers are on the board to a question asked of 100 people. Tell me something it's really hard to get your dog into or out of. We go to Tim. Your car. How about car? Number two, one answer could be more popular. Something that is really hard to get your dog into or out of. The bathtub. Bathtub. Oh no, it's not the how old are you, Colin? Eighteen. Eighteen. It's, it's Colin, I'm sorry. You're his mother, aren't you? No. Sister? First of all, leave him alone. I'm talking to him. It's between him and me. Colin, thank you for being eighteen. Tell me something it's really hard to get your dog into or out of. The veterinarian. The veterinarian. <laughs> Nicely done. Karen. How about their doghouse? Yes. Yes. yes! Did anybody on the survey say doghouse? No. They did. Yes. You got the clean, sweet Mona, if you know. Pet carrier. Yes. Yes. Those mobile pet yes. carriers. Yes. One stop for you to hold up. Ken? Really hard to get your dog into or out of. Um... <clears throat> Void. Void? Well, what if I said, what if I could say, you need to give me an answer in a certain amount of time? Okay. If I was uh, allowed to say that. It's, uh... Three seconds. It's a little door on that door. You know, that, that close the entryway. I think that the time is running. Uh, okay, okay, that's, you understand what he's talking about. Sure, I do. Now I understand. It's a dog door. A dog door. That's Thank it. You, on the door. That's it. Show me dog door. <laughs> Two strikes. Come on, Carolyn, that's your bank. I'll give it a try. I say a dog pin. Is it hard to get a pin around a dog pin? <laughs> you hold this pin since you earned it, but can you steal? Something that's really hard to get your dog into or out of, that. A collar. A collar. Your backyard. Backyard. The house. House. The house. House. You tell her what you want her to say. One answer alone steals the bank. What is it, Mary? House. Let me see. For the steal is number four, house. Uh, McKenzie, keep their bank. Mary, this would have gotten you that bank. It's really hard to get your dog in or out of number four. Dogs! <laughs> Who, what kind of sissy dogs are those? We're coming right back with more food fun after these messages. We are shooting. The McKenzie's $85, the Jacobson's $49. Let's face off! The McCullen. The top five answers are on the board. 
We are now going down the back stretch to 300 to play for 10,000. We ask 100 people to tell me something that people will always remember about Marilyn Monroe. We go to Colin. That she was pretty. She was pretty. Yeah. Yeah. On the survey, two could be more popular, Tom. Tell me something that people will always remember about Marilyn Monroe. Her blonde hair. Blonde hair. Number one. Yeah. Kara, come on. Her alleged affair with Kennedy? Yeah. Spoken as an attorney. Her alleged affair. I would have loved to have called for that, but I didn't get a chance to. We have an eager trick finger on that buzzer. That's one strike. And uh, if you'll just hold that right there so that we can kind of disguise your identity from the American public. Alleged victim. Bad? Something that people will always remember about Marilyn Monroe. How about those photographs? Which, which one's that? <laughs> uh, calendars. Okay, maybe. all right. Uh, pictures. Photographs. Uh, what? Put it right there. Mayor, yes. come on, keep the team alive. Her eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Show me those beautiful eyes. Oh. There are very many things to remember about Marilyn Monroe, but what did the survey say people will always remember? One answer. Her movies. Her movies. Shape. Her shape. The legs. Oh, kind of nice answer. Chest. Chest, yes. legs, movies. Yes. You tell Ken what got you that steal. Up to you. With them on your own for the steal? A man's answer, a figure. Yes. Yes. People will always remember her figure for the steal. Yes. You take the bank. The people in our survey said she will always be remembered for number four. Untimely death. death. And number five. Up. Certainly it's in my mind. And let's go with another face-off. 130 for the McKenzie. We are doubling the dollar value, which means the McKenzie family could win the game if you take this question all the way out. Kara, you need to stop them. The top four answers are on the board. We ask, are you okay? Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> we ask 100 people this question. Tell me a reason why a person might exchange a gift. We go to Kara. Wrong size. It's the wrong size. Yeah. Number one. Think of a steal. It possibly could win you the game to steal. Let's go. Let's go. Bad. That was my fist. Got a good answer. Oh. Well, the dollar value's doubled. You can help yourself. Tell me a reason why a person might exchange a gift. You got two of them. You already have. You already have one. You already got one. Two gifts. There's enough there they can win if they get the steal. Come on, man. Come on. You don't like it. Yeah. You just don't yes. like it. Yes. Yes. I don't think I can spell it out any simpler than this, Tim. That if you can tell me a reason why a person might exchange a gift that matches number four, you're going to play for $10,000. No no no, excuse me, you're not. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm all mixed up. It's they can. And I'm, I'm feeling what they're thinking. Well, I'm not giving it to them. Okay. Uh, those guys. Hey, it's, going to it's soiled or torn. It is soiled or... Somebody's giving you a soiled or torn gift. Well, what I was saying was to you guys. <laughs> Come on, Tom. It's broken. Broken. <laughs> Think of the steel. Don't say it. Wrong color? It's the wrong color. Yes, sir. We got the bank, 200 to 249. Here we go. We made another face-up. Right now. The dollar value is tripled. We take the two players. This is the final face-off. We're going to take this question all the way out. We'll win the game. Listen to me very carefully. I'm going to read the question one time. When I say your name, you have three seconds to give me an answer. Top four answers were on the board. We ask 100 people, in which country was your car made? Bad. Japan. You see Japan. Right. Right. Number two, Mona. 
America, let me see it. Number one, think of a steal. You follow it, which country your car was made? Ken. Germany, show me Germany. You're playing for 10 grand if we see if number three is what, Carolyn? England. Is it England? Bring it home, Colin. Italy. Show me Italy. <laughs> Karen. Karen. Europe. Show me Europe. <laughs> Here you go. In which country was your car made? Oh, France. France. France, Korea? Sweden. Sweden. Tell me. One answer, and I need that choice from you now. If it's not fair, Mackenzie's are the champs. Sweden! What was number three that would have stolen this game? Canada! I don't quite know. The family's going home with some cash. Some nice partying, guys. Good job, Bad. Stay here. God bless you. Two players are needed for $10,000. When we return, we will be playing the fast money, ten thousand dollars, Colin, eighteen years old. Son. We're back with our new champions. Good luck to the McKenzies. We put fifteen seconds on that clock. Colin is going first, eighteen years old. Bring it home. We ask one hundred people these five questions. Besides toothpaste. Name something people use to freshen their breath. Iron hammer. How many aspirins you take in an average week? Uh, seven. A slang word or phrase for the word talk? Uh, chat. A kind of bun? Uh, hamburger. Something you make with batter? Uh, bread. Turn around! <laughs> Besides toothpaste, you said people use this to freshen their breath. <laughs> Arm and hammer baking yeah. soda. Nothing, nothing like a sweet kiss of baking soda. Oh, yeah. Survey said two. All right, okay. That's okay. See, in an average okay. week, this many aspirins would be taken. Seven aspirins. Survey said four. Right. Slang word or phrase for talk you chose. Chat. Survey chose 18. Yeah, right, right, right. The kind of bun you like. <laughs> Hamburger bun. What did the survey like? Yeah! Yeah! Way to go, Tom. Made with batter, you said. Bread, what'd the survey say? Oh. Oh. Wasn't bad. There you go, Colin. Back okay, with your family. Colin, that's okay. Leaving a little work. Okay. Okay. Come here, Karen. You are 143 away. Look straight ahead. 20 seconds on that clock, revealing the answers given by your partner. You bring this home. You know how it works. Should you hear the sound? You've duplicated one of your partner's answers, and I'll say try again. You can do it. Just listen carefully. We ask a hundred people besides toothpaste. Name something people use to freshen their breath. Mouthwash. How many aspirins you take in an average week? Five. A slang word or phrase for the word talk? Jabber. A kind of bun? Hot dog bun. Something you make with batter? Cake. Turn around. Did you get 143? Besides toothpaste, used to freshen breath, you thought people used? Mouthwash. Survey said... Five. Breath mint, the number one answer not given. How many aspirins you take in an average week? You went a little less with five aspirins. Our survey said three. Two aspirins per week, number one in our survey. Boy, who knows? <laughs> the slang word or phrase used for talk, you said jabber. Survey said two. Gab was number one. There are many kinds of buns. I asked you a kind of bun you went with. The old hot dog bun, the survey said. 32. Yeah. Hamburger bun was number one. Don't even do it. Something you make with batter. You're going for $5 a point. You chose. Cake. Survey said. 29. Pancakes number one. $5 a point gives our new champions $640.
is coming back with the McKenzie's. Big board was a little rough today. Don't go away. For the feud, I'm Ray Combs. We'll see you next time. Some of our departing contestants will receive Bao Shen Long, Allergy Drops, Relieve the Itching, Burning, and Redness Caused by Allergy Eyes. Recommended by Allergist, Bao Shen Long, Allergy Drops Used as Directed. Hamburger Helper Lasagna with curly Italian noodles and the rich tomato sauce. Hamburger Helper helps you make a great meal. Sing along to your favorite hits to make a recording with your own Singalodeon. In Japan, it's Karaoke. In America, it's Singalodeon by Lone Star. Tootsie Roll Midgies, as good as you remember. Only 27 calories. Why not try some today? Tootsie Roll, as good as you remember. Soft Touch puts designer fashion into fitness. Coordinated body wear and Antron-like fibers, bright colors, and new silhouettes for any workout furnished by Soft Touch. Hold on, are all fruit, sweetened only with fruit juice, no sugar added, taste the fruit, not the sugar. That's the Polan are all fruit, but please don't dare call it jelly. <laughs> this is Gene Wood speaking for Family Feud, a Mark Goodson television production. There's a thrifty near you and a caring pharmacist to consult with on your prescription needs. Colin, Karen, and Mona, ready for action. <laughs> Playing again, the John Carlo family, Juretta. Thank you very much. Hello to the Jim Carlo family. Welcome to the McKenzie. And welcome to all those who tuned in at home to see who will get the chance to play for our $10,000 today. Yeah. It's going to be a great feud. Will it be our returning champions, the McKenzie family? Yeah. Second day on the show. Fell short of the fast money last time. But once again, Ken, tell everybody who you brought with you. Okay, this is my sister-in-law, Carolyn. Yes. My brother, Colin. All right. My okay, sister. first of all, Ken, lose the attitude. I'll try to get it right. <laughs> Colin. My sister Karen. Yes. And my sister Mona. We welcome you back. We wish you much luck. How will you do against the Giancarlo family? Giretta? No. Buongiorno. The first name is Giretta? Giretta. Giretta Giancarlo. That's right. Well, welcome. From? Well, I'm from Oregon originally, but I just moved here from Italy. Okay, that must have been a heck of a drive. Um, <laughs> who'd you bring with you? I brought my wonderful Aunt Patty. Hi. My big brain cousin, Marcus. Welcome. Hello. My beautiful cousin from Trinidad, Shireen. Mm -hmm. And that's my mom down there. Yeah. Welcome to the feud. The McKenzie's are tough. It's time to play the feud. From Trinidad to Monte Carlo to Italy to Oregon to Southern California. The first family to 300 will play for $10,000. The top seven answers are on that board. To a question we ask 100 people across America, try to find the most popular answer to this. Name something that could happen that could make your party a disaster. Loretta. Nobody shows up! No one shows up. <laughs> Number one. We're going to see you. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Hi, there. Ooh, you're so sweet. <laughs> So eager to be here, I can tell. Yes. <laughs> well, let's see you give one of those good answers and you'll be happier. The caterers don't show could, up. Could make your party be a disaster. Okay. If the caterer doesn't show up. We can do it. We can Ken do is it. very happy with that, but unfortunately, Patty, you must now hold this. Marcus? How you do? I'm, I'm doing fine. You'll do better if you can name something that could happen. That could make your party a disaster. 
the DJ or the music doesn't show up. No music. Marcus. Shereen, it's up to you now. You've got six answers to choose from to keep your family rolling or they're going for the steal. What could make your party be a disaster? You run out of food? Run out of food. Keep it going. They need you. All right. Bad weather. Your party yeah. could be ruined by bad weather. Yes. <laughs> they are jumping up and down as though they know. We yeah, asked a hundred people. Something could happen. Make your party a disaster. One answer, Mona. Uh. Quickly, Karen. Yes, yeah, someone bust it. Someone bust your party. A fight. A fight. A fight. A fight. A fight. A fight. You tell right. Ken. Yeah. Thirty-seven dollars. Yeah. Coming this way. If Ken goes with the right answer, what do you say? Fight! Could ruin a party and steal a bank if somebody said fight. Kind of a moral victory. Giancarlo family, these four remaining answers could have kept you rolling. Our survey said your party could become a disaster if number three happened. Drunk? Oh, yes! All right, number five. Bad food. Disastrous party with number six. Power failure. Just don't ever invite Scotty. We have no power. Power, Captain. We have no power. Number seven. Uninvited guests. Yeah. Said right here by Colin. We're coming back, but believe me, our challengers are not giving up. The feud has only begun. Answers are on the board. 100 people surveyed. Name a great old time dance that most young people today don't know how to do. Carolyn? Foxtrot. Show me the Foxtrot. You didn't make the survey. It is there. Now stay here. Three answers could be more popular. A great old time dance that most young people today don't know how to do.